Hello AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here for our final video from topics 2.2 to 2.4. It's been kind of a long road with uh, the five videos that are associated with this, but you'll ha be happy to know that I can take one video here and really tie up our last four examples with our notes. Uh, that would be examples five, six, seven, and eight, of course. And the focus is going to be on slopes, slopes of tangent lines, and their impending equation. So let's just jump right to it. The beginning of example five says that we're given this table uh, and it's a table of the body temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of a polar bear on a very cold Arctic day. And we're asked to estimate the value T prime of 5.5. And you notice that there is a calculator icon. And I seriously doubt you remember this, but on the very first day of class, <clears throat> I gave you a question very similar to this problem. Excuse me. <clears throat> but you didn't know what that prime mark means. We didn't really talk about the idea of the derivative, but I explained the process by which you could find that. So what you're going to do with this problem is notice that 5.5 does not lie in my chart. However, it does find itself sandwiched nicely between the time 5 and the time 6. So you're going to really focus on these four numbers and think about how you can incorporate those numbers into a derivative. And the answer to that question would be by way of a slope because that's what the derivative is it's just a slope now a couple of things I'd like you to do here I'd like you to identify what you're doing maybe say t prime of 5.5 to start with I would really love it if you could use an approximately symbol the actual value of a derivative is never typically going to equal exactly its approximate value that would be the actual slope of two points that are around that particular 5.5. We're talking about the instantaneous rate of change here versus the average rate of change. On the AP exam, if you put an equal sign, it's typically a forgivable error, but it's something I would like you guys to start really thinking about and use the approximation symbol uh, when it's certainly going to be needed. So in this particular case, we're going to be finding uh, t of 6 minus t of 5. When I say t, I'm talking about capital T, which stands for temperature, not time. And then we'll divide that by the two times, 6 minus 5. Now, typically speaking, if a student were to write this expression out, you would receive a point for having the difference quotient if this were, a, say, a two-point problem. Um, if it was only worth one point, however, you would have to at least extract those values from the table. This would be extremely important. Those two values have to be extracted from the table, subtracted in the correct order as well. And then that answer that I have just written would earn full credit because it is now numerical. Um, it doesn't have a label. Now we should probably put the degrees Fahrenheit, but it sort of implies that that was going to be the label. Now, if you want to completely finish this up, you could go ahead and subtract these. And oh gosh, on the spot here, uh, 90.45 minus 90.73. I think that's going to be what? Uh, negative uh, 0.28, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so we would have something like this over 1, of course, which we don't need to write, and that would be degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're looking here, what we're looking at here is basically um, what you would expect to have happen with this polar bear's uh, temperature. Basically, his body temperature is, is decreasing by about a quarter of a degree uh, for each. Uh, well, what is the time measured in? Minutes for each minute um, uh, that he is functioning, all right, walking around, which means that my label is not correct. I don't want degrees Fahrenheit because it needs to be over time. So I would have degrees Fahrenheit per minute. The way that you can always make sure that your labels are correct is if you look at the numerator and know that it's measured in degrees Fahrenheit, and you look at the denominator and know that that's measured in minutes, the label essentially takes care of itself. Now I'm going to plant an idea in your head here. In this next little phrase, it says, perhaps you recall a very important equation from Algebra 1. Wow, that goes way back to the middle school. 
Well, remember this equation enabled you to write the equation of a line. It was called the point-slope formula, and it looks something like y minus y1 equal m quantity x minus x1. By simply renaming some of the values within that equation, you come up with a very valuable tool that's going to enable you to write the equation of a tangent line. All right, so what am I rewriting here? Well, if the slope of the tangent exists, then the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the point c, f of c is simply this guy. Notice the f of c is now being used instead of the y1. Just a different way to say it, no big deal. And I'm going to, of course, use c for my x1. And then the all-important slope. That's what this is about, right? Calculus talks about a lot about slope in the first semester. The slope is now going to be depicted by the derivative at c. So we're going to be using this all the time, and I need you to get very, very comfortable with it. Now, in the meantime, we're just going to practice a couple of things to kind of ease our way into that equation. And example six says, here's a graph of a function f. It consists of three line segments. Let's find f prime of four. And it's a multiple choice problem. Now, upon first inspection, we might think, oh, wait a minute, H how do you take the derivative of a graph? I mean, <laughs> I'm not so sure how that can happen. We, we can do the derivative of equations, right, or of expressions, but right now we have to use that really long derivative limit definition. That's kind of a big deal. That takes a long time. So what you can do with this problem is simply figure out where your 4 is uh, along the x-axis, and notice that the x-axis is segmented into units of 2. And if I kind of trace that back up to the curve, then it's probably likely that that's where the point would lie. Now, what is it that we're interested in at this stage? We want the derivative value. We want the slope of the tangent line value. Well, wait a minute. The slope of the tangent line drawn to a graph that's already a line is the slope of that line already. So all you have to do is figure out what the slope is of this piece of the graph. And the best way to do that is just finding what the uh, difference of the y's over difference of the x's are. So we'll take 13 minus 1 and divide that by 6 minus 0. And upon doing so, we have 12 on top, 6 on bottom. We know that reduces to 2. So this slope here is 2. And fortunately for us, one of the options is indeed 2. So you're just looking for the slope of that graph in this case. Notice it wasn't asking for f of 4. f of 4 would be whatever the y value would be, which you could probably find somewhere right around in there. But that's not what we are interested in. All right, let's move on to the final page. So I'm going to slide my camera view up here just a little bit. And now we have our example 7. A function f is defined on the closed interval, negative 2 to 16. The graph of the derivative, y equal f prime, is given below. OK, well, this is new. That is the derivative graph. We know that the point 14, negative 2 happens to lie on the graph of f of x. What would be the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at 14, negative 2? So you have to think about what are the key ingredients that you need in order to write the equation of a tangent line. Well, number one, you need something called a point. Well, the point is all taken care of for you because they mention it several times here. It's 14, negative 2. So that's not so bad. So what is the second thing that you need to write the equation of a tangent line? And that answer is slope. Now this is the part that you're going to have to think about a little bit. Because in calculus, the idea of slope has this new meaning. And that meaning is derivative. Slope, derivative. Well, wait a minute. This graph is our derivative. OK, well, where is it specifically that you want to find that derivative? Well, it happens to be when the x is 14. And if you notice, if you look on this graph, you have an ordered pair that is identified as 14, 3. And that 3 happens to be the y value of that derivative. So that means that your slope is 3. 
Once you have come to the conclusion those are your two elements, you use this handy dandy thing called the point slope formula. What a great name for that, right? You're given a point in the slope. So you would say y minus the y value, make sure you know that that's a negative 2, would equal the slope 3 quantity x minus the x value of 14. Now typically you could stop right there. Perhaps this matches one of the choices. It pretty much comes close to doing so, but in this case we will just simplify the double negative there. And we won't really have to do anything else because you'll notice that this does match B very nicely. There are some instances where you may have to get Y completely by itself for a multiple choice problem and then match the correct answer. All right, our last problem and maybe our most challenging question here, number eight. If the line 2x plus 3y equal k is tangent to the graph of y equal f of x at the point where x is 5, what is the value of the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus f of 5 over x minus 5? Wow, there's a lot going on there. So the key to this problem is truly understanding what does this mean? What is that meaning of that yellow highlighted expression? And so if you kind of think back to the beginning of this unit, when that kind of an expression was first introduced, we called it the derivative. In this particular case, it's actually the derivative of the function called f evaluated at the c of 5. Well, okay, what does that mean? Well, we have to know that that's also synonymous with the slope, right? It's the slope of the graph f of x at the value x equal 5. Okay, it's the slope. It maybe be a little bit more specific. How about we say the slope of the tangent line? That's even better. You can say it's the slope of f of x, but I like to be a little bit more thorough and say slope of tangent line. So what do we know about this tangent line to f of x? Well, that happens to be the very first piece of information that was provided. And I'm going to just rewrite this so that we can work, or work with it a bit. And we have to understand, well, how do we find the slope of this equation? Well, if you remember back from your Algebra 1 days, you want to get the y value by itself. Okay, so we divide everything by 3, and we end up with y equal negative 2 thirds x plus k. Well, now we have, uh, let's say k over 3. I forgot to divide it by 3 as well. There we go. So let's see what we've got. We now have negative 2 thirds, which we are going to say is our slope. Okay, but also we know that the derivative of f is also negative 2 thirds. So let's think about that for just a second. What was the question actually posing? It wanted to know the value of this limit. Well, this limit is nothing more than the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line, and that's exactly what we were seeking. All we really had to do is solve that linear equation that I have marked right here for y and extract its slope, but we had to be able to tie that into the meaning of that expression in yellow. You guys, this is just the beginning of our journey with derivatives. Uh, the great news is, is when we start our future videos from this point, you're not going to have to work so hard when you take derivatives because we have a really great shortcut that we're going to share with you. So I want you to make sure that you tune in for topic 2.5 because that's when the really important stuff starts. Anyhow, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.